Hello, my name is Emily, and for the past year, I was traveling all around Asia with South Korea as my home base. We've made it to Bali. I made it to Thailand. Just got off our motorbikes, and now we're going on a little hike into China. We are currently in Japan. Now we are kayaking on Halong Bay. This summer, I had big plans of hiking the Pacific Crest Trail from California all the way to Washington, but due to coronavirus and the pandemic that's currently happening, um, plans everywhere have been canceled. So since borders internationally are closed right now, I decided I wanted to travel some more around the U.S. for the time being. So I have this 2005 Chevy Express cargo van that I'm going to be converting into my tiny home on wheels. So I'm excited to share everything that I'm doing. I am not experienced at all with building, so I'm sure I will have some things to learn as I go. So I'm just going to share this process and share everything that I'm learning and everything that I'm doing. So hopefully it can help you um, or just entertain you. So yeah, I'm excited. Follow along. The first thing that I've done so far with this van is tear out the inside. There was a flooring and there was ceiling and walls that I unbolted. And so now I basically have a clean shell that I'm just going to clean today and hopefully work on a bit of a layout. I have no idea um, what that will look like yet, but I'm excited to try some different things. All right, it's my first official day of building out my van. Today I went to Lowe's and got some insulation stuff. I got some foam board and some plywood that I'm gonna insulate the floors with, and then also probably use the same for the walls. So right now I'm just gonna make a template for the floors so I know where to cut and um, how to shape those awkward angles kind of around the wheels and whatnot. I have my template so now I'm going to sweep it out and then start cutting the foam to go uh, below the floor. board cut to size right behind me and now I'm going to be gluing that directly to the metal um, bottom part of the van and then on top of the foam I'm going to be putting the plywood and on top of the plywood I will be putting my actual flooring panels. It's been like Christmas morning around here so many packages coming in today it's so exciting finally happening. Got the fan and the fridge. Continuing on the insulation, I'm now gonna cut out the plywood for the subfloor. So I actually have a mat that was in the van when I originally got it. So that makes a perfect template for the subfloor. And I'm just going to trace around and then cut out with the saw. Today is the third day of the van build and I'm still working on some insulation. I have all the floor panels cut and put down and now I'm just getting the wall insulation up so hopefully I can put on the furring strips to act as studs today too. And I have some backup, some extra help. So, should be a good day. is almost done on the sides um, so all the walls are now covered with the poly iso foam board um, we cut it to size my mom helped out so much today thanks mom and then we sprayed some 3m adhesive onto the back and sprayed it on the wall and the back of the foam and stuck it up and it did a pretty good job of staying so I was um, pleased by that it was the first time I used that and then in some of the cracks in the doors, I sprayed the expanding foam spray, which um, just a note, don't get it on your fingers because it will get stuck and be a pain to get off, but you can still get it off. Um, anyways, it's starting to take form here. Um, I'm very excited how it's going only three days in and we have the subfloor finished and just about all the walls and we're starting to experiment with some of the siding, some of this um, wood for the studs. Um, oh, also a tip that we learned when we put on the walls, um, it helps if you kind of bend it or crack it and do it in like three chunks um, because there's a natural 
curve to the van walls, so one big board is really hard to um, get up there without any airspace. So if you just kind of break it into threes and then put it up, it's a lot better. And also with this stuff, apparently it does not matter. We read all the um, warnings and instructions. It does not matter which side is on the inside or the outside, the foil or the white. So you can also um, switch that up too based on your cuts. But yeah, day three, it's looking pretty good. I'm excited. I have a floor. I was so frustrated yesterday trying to install it by myself and wasn't getting anywhere because the tongue and the groove has to connect on the side as well as the front. And with just one person it was nearly impossible. But my mom came to the rescue and we knocked this out in like 15 minutes last night. So finally starting to look like a little home. Now that my insulation and floors are all done, I'm now moving into the phase two of my van renovation. So I think I'm gonna start to work on the framing of the furniture and first I'm gonna do the bed. So for my bed, I'm not gonna have a fixed bed because that would take up almost this whole entire van. I wanted something that could also be like a couch where I could actually sit and work on my computer if I needed to um, and things like that. So I've kind of fallen back onto what a lot of people seem to be doing. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on people working with this slat bed design that pulls out from a couch on these slats onto a bed. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Today I went to Lowe's and got some wood um, and all the materials that I'll need. And I'm just kind of framing everything out and working on the dimensions. I took my measurements and now I'm using this chop saw to cut the correct sizes for the length pieces out of these two by threes. And then the supports in the middle also out of these two by threes. Right, my bed platform is completely finished and now I'm making some boxes that are gonna slide perfectly underneath so I can store things like bedding and kitchen supplies and whatever else I feel like. So now I'm kind of making boxes. I've never done it before so I'm just kind of winging it and learning it as I go. The next step is to cut the mattress to size. Since I built a sofa that will pull out into a bed, I wanted to have two cushions, so I'm cutting a queen size memory foam mattress. It was a little janky that I'm cutting it with a kitchen knife, but it worked great for this. I didn't film much for the next five days because it was rainy off and on and I didn't want my camera getting wet. I built most of the interior furniture, like the sink in the kitchen. And then my next big step is drilling a hole for the max air fan and attaching the solar panels. All right, so now we're gonna drill a hole into the corner and meet up with it at the bottom and drill up. Gonna cut a hole in the roof? And then cut that hole. There's a hole in the middle of my van and it stressed me out, but it's there. Now this is gonna go on the inside and then the fan will go on top of that. Today was definitely the hottest day yet of working out here dripping sweat non-stop, but we got the roof vent fan in today completely, and we did not have any rain, so that was really nice. And then we also got in 
this um, siding all along the van, which was harder than it looked. Um, but it's starting to look really good with the walls coming together. Bed is done. The kitchen area is almost done. Um, still working on this furniture piece across from the bed, and then we're gonna do the sink. The next day I finished the roof by installing solar panels. To finish the ceiling, I stained tongue and groove cedar panels that I then installed with screws. My last steps were finishing my overhead cabinets and then painting everything. I decided to go with green for a nice pop of color. In just 30 days, I transformed this cargo van into my home on wheels. I've been traveling around and living in my van for over two months now. Stay tuned for a van tour video coming soon.